Hello and welcome to Jewish Online Magazine. My name is David Barry. I recently had the pleasure of meeting with Sam of SEDEC, a Jewish charitable organisation. SEDEC work with partners, projects and communities around the world, regardless of their race or religion, providing direct support to help people so they can help themselves. SEDEC seek to raise awareness educate and encourage Jews to recognise, understand and act on their Jewish responsibilities concerning extreme poverty around the world. I began by asking Sam, what does Sedek mean? Sedek is um, uh, translated into justice uh, and part of Sedek's mission is to create uh, a just world free from poverty. Mm. And. Um, can you tell um, the viewers of this video, Sam, about your tag, the slogan that you have? Uh, what, that one, a just world free from poverty? Mm. Well, we at SEDEC believes that uh, justice is a fundamental value, it's part of Judaism. And it comes from that classic phrase, SEDEC, SEDEC, Tirdov, justice, justice shall you pursue. Um, so creating a just world and, and uh, eradicating poverty, we feel, is a really important part of... Uh, what being Jewish means and a really important part of Judaism mm. uh, and as an organization we really try to enact that as much. Sedek is um, uh, translated into justice uh, and part of Sedek's mission is to create uh, a just world free from poverty. Mm. And um, can you tell um, the viewers of this video Sam about your tag, the slogan that you have? Uh, what that one, a just world free from poverty? Mm. Well, we at SEDEC believes that uh, justice is a fundamental value, it's part of Judaism. And it comes from that classic phrase, SEDEC, SEDEC, Tirdov, justice, justice shall you pursue. Um, so creating a just world and, and uh, eradicating poverty, we feel, is a really important part of uh, what being Jewish means, and a really important part of Judaism. Mm. Uh, and as an organisation, we really try to enact that as much as possible. And um, is this um, tackling global poverty? Sam? Yes, yes, that's the idea. Uh, we work mainly in uh, Ghana and India. We have partnership regions there. Uh, and we also have projects in other parts of the world as well. Um, why the focus on Ghana and India? Well, it's useful to have regions where we can build a strong relationship. Right, okay. Um, the reason being that we have lots of contacts, local people in the area know each other, we can build a reputation for SEDEC in the area as a trustworthy, um, a trustworthy organisation to work with. Uh, and it's um, really important that you have a good reputation and also there's an element of being able to focus on a particular region uh, gives you, uh, over time, it gives you the opportunity to see change in the change that you're bringing to those areas. Mm. And um, how long has SEDEC been operating for? SEDEC's been operating for, well, it's been operating as, a, a, as something smaller for around 20 years. Around five or six years ago it became um, a, an official organisation with a director. Um, and it's still rapidly growing. And what was the motivation, what inspired the founder to establish SEDEC? Uh, well, you'd have to ask him personally. Mm. Um, but I think that what he saw was that there was a lot of, um, I don't want to speak for him, mm. uh, there was a, a lot of Jewish community action going on, um, but not so much uh, action for those in poverty outside of the Jewish community. Right. Um, and I think it also came off the back of uh, live aid as it was in the 80s, you know, the, the Bono and Bob Geldof yes. thing. Um, and that was a real awareness raising opportunity and it seemed like a very good, a good moment to begin a, a Jewish organisation that focused itself on um, other peoples and other parts of the world that were suffering. Mm. Do you think it's important for the Jewish community to be involved in global actions such as perhaps trying to eliminate the poverty? Mm -hmm. uh, I think increasingly we find ourselves in a, in a globalised world. The world is a lot smaller and we find ourselves as global citizens really, in, mm -hmm. almost in a, 
um, a very closely connected, closely integrated world. Uh, and as citizens, as, as part of the, of, of the planet, uh, we feel that there's a responsibility to act, um, to help others as much as possible. And this is part of our programming, the Jewish Global Citizenship Project, which is part of our education programming. Um, and part of that is a twinning program that we set up with um, Jewish schools in, in the UK, with Ghanaian primary schools um, in Tamale in northern Ghana. Where and how does that work then, Sam? So we have a series of lessons that both classes go through, and they work through the lessons, and then they swap the work. Wow. Uh, so each class becomes a, almost a pen pal of the other. Oh. So some of the lessons include uh, drawing the view from out of your window. Okay. And then they swap the work. And obviously it's very different because in Ghana, they're drawing pictures of goats and sheep, and uh, the oh, colours so are very brown and yeah. red, and here they're drawing... Um, Greys, and actually we have one school which is located more in the countryside and they have green and fields and the Ghanaian children are always really surprised by that view of countryside that they mm. get from that particular school. Um, and that's part of our, our twinning programme. And do they also perhaps um, discuss their respective faiths as well? Absolutely. Uh, there's definitely an element of sharing perspectives on the world. The programme is called Londin Biyachad. Uh, and actually on the front of the cover you can see that we have um, a, a, a biblical quote and we also have the same thing translated into Dagbani, which is the local Ghanaian dialect. Mm. Um, so faith is an important part of it. Um, in Ghana the children are mostly Muslim, some of them are Christian. Uh, and here obviously the children are Jewish, so it's a really interesting... And that's really, really fantastic, exchange. Sam, that you know, from a very, very young age, you know, Jewish children and Muslim children can learn to get, you know, to be united. Absolutely, and one of the some of the feedback that we're seeing from it is is incredibly positive. Both sides really look forward to receiving work from the other, mm. uh, and it's something that most children don't get an opportunity to do to have almost that direct contact with people in totally different circumstances on the other side of the mm. world. Have you been to Ghana? I have. I spent six months in Ghana uh, as an intern for Sedek last year. Mm. And um, can you tell, um, tell us a little bit about it, um, about your six months in Ghana, your experiences, Sam? Um... Uh, so I spent six months there basically working on lots of different things that Sedek needed doing. Part of that was filming, um, uh, filming some of the people that we work with out there and seeing how our projects are affecting them and getting video interviews as, as an evidence of that. Um, part of that was documenting the twinning programme uh, and seeing what could be improved on it. Uh, and I also spent time working for a local NGO a couple of days a week called the Northern Network for Education Development, which um, lobbies local government on education issues and networks. There's, there's quite a few different non-governmental organisations and charities working in Tamale. Mm. Uh, and it networks all of those and represents them to local government, which makes them quite a powerful uh, organisation. Mm. So I spent a couple of days learning from them working in their office um, and contributing what I could for them. Spending six months in Ghana must have changed your life, Sam. It was a really uh, inspiring experience. Mm. Uh, and, and you understand that life in the developing world is not at all like you see on TV or in the news. Um, it's, there is joy and there is laughter and there is dignity. Uh, and, and it's a real, um, real eye-opening experience to see the way in which people manage their lives mm. and the way in which people um, survive. Mm. Is it possible to ignore the politics in a particular country that you are helping? Um, I think that depends partly on your personal politics. Uh, I think Ghana is a relatively stable country. There is not that much corruption relative to the rest of uh, the rest of parts of Africa. Uh, I think that politics is a very real issue there, particularly in Ghana at the moment where they're in the middle of a general, well, they're in the run-up to a general election. I think on the small scale, when you're doing some of the projects that SEDEC are, like microfinance projects, where we, we give small loans to local people to uh, start micro-businesses, uh, on that level, I think maybe politics doesn't come into it too much. But on a broader level, when you're looking at things like the economy and inflation and things like that, mm -hmm. I think that politics is to some extent unavoidable. Mm 
Mm. But at the very localised level where we're working, it's not something that you see every day. Mm. Um, it's something that has a long-term impact on projects, but not a short-term. Um, is there sometimes a reluctance for some organisations to help to receive help from a Jewish, a Jewish organisation? Sorry, say that again. Is there sometimes a reluctance from organisations that need help, mm -hmm. that need money, to accept money from a Jewish organisation such as SEDEC? Not, for, not in our experience at all. Um, whilst the population there is mostly Islamic, mm. um, that Islam is, is completely devoid of relation to Judaism or Israel. In fact, when you tell people you're Jewish there, it's almost like saying you're from Mars. They just don't know what Jewish is. They have no relation to it. Wow. They have no reason to engage with it. Um, Islamic extremism, as we see it in North Africa, hasn't really made it to Ghana uh, in West Africa yet. Uh, you know, it has made it to parts of Nigeria. But actually, people are very grateful, very interested to hear about, um, about your religion and your perspective and are fascinated by the parallels between the two religions. Sure, yeah. You know, comparing uh, Kashrut with Halal, <laughs> um, comparing the, the forefathers of both religions. We mm. call um, uh, Jacob Yaakov, they call him Yakub. <laughs> right. uh, and swapping all of the stories, and they're fascinated that somebody from the West knows all of the different stories and can converse about them. Mm. Uh, it's actually, they find it an incredibly rewarding experience, mm. uh, and you know, so do we in encountering those people. And there must be um, many opportunities to perform a Kiddush Hashem as well, Sam. Uh, oh, absolutely. Mm. I mean, it's one of those things where you um, have to be careful about how you represent yourself. Mm. Uh, because there is a lot of perception about England uh, and about the West. Um, and certainly the way in which you go about representing yourself as a Jewish person and as a Western Jewish person is really important. That's interesting, Sam. So yeah, you're absolutely right. You're representing not only your your heritage, mm -hmm. but also you're representing your country as well. Yeah, I, I think it's dangerous to put it in those terms exactly because it makes it sound like you're coming over there to impose yourself on them and tell them mm. how to, how to live and how they should make their own lives better. Mm. Uh, and I don't think that's necessarily positive. What Sedek really emphasises is that we work in partnership with people. Um, working with people on projects that they design uh, mm. to help them help them to help themselves. Mm. So there is an element of that. I, I wouldn't overstate that that idea of representing your country, but um, certainly with Judaism and, and putting across Judaism, it certainly it, it raises interesting questions about the culture differences and, and how you explain things to people. Mm. And. With regard to helping people in poverty, Sam, isn't the answer trying to eliminate the poverty rather than perhaps trying to contribute money? Uh, the answer is to eliminate poverty, isn't it, Sam? Absolutely. Uh, the aim, of course, is to eradicate poverty. Mm. Uh, and it's certainly not an easy task. Mm. Um, but again, there is uh, not really, I don't think that there's a magic bullet to eradicate poverty. I think that it's something that needs work and it involves working with people in the local area to uh, answer the needs that they have uh, and, to, and to approach the problems that they have rather than the problems that we think that we see. Mm. And I think that's really important. And, and again, that's where partnership comes back into it. So what we have that we can provide is expertise to some extent and we send volunteers over uh, once a year um, but uh, and money as well but in terms of real local knowledge and real answers to the problems that are um, that are affecting people in local areas um, it, it should be originating from local people mm. so how would Sedek um, differ from perhaps the world famous names such as I don't know Oxfam uh -huh. or, you know, uh, or Save the Children, for instance, Sam. How does SEDEC differ from those organisations? Well, those organisations are very, very large um, organisations with not just uh, an advantage in funding, but also political influence as well. They have large policy departments and advisors 
uh, and they're also directly operational on the ground. So you can go to countries in the developing world and you will find an Oxfam office running an Oxfam project. SEDEC is obviously much smaller and we're working in much more localised areas. Uh, and again, the difference is whilst Oxfam do have partnerships, SEDEC's model is very much more partnership orientated. Mm -hmm. So we are not operational in the sense that we have a SEDEC project, but we work with a local organisation mm. um, and work alongside them. And how does SEDEC decide on a particular project? So we have a volunteer run team called the Overseas Project Team, that shortens to OPT. Uh, and what that team does is takes in letters of inquiry from organisations around the world who find SEDEC uh, either online or through word of mouth and apply for a grant. And the team of volunteers goes through the letter of inquiry and through um, a thorough process eliminates them and gets in contact with those organisations uh, and tries to pick out the project that they think will best benefit from SEDEC funding. Hmm. So that's a volunteer run team. Uh, and uh, they meet every six weeks or so to try uh, to eliminate, no, not eliminate, uh, to choose the best projects for SEDEC funding. Mm. And what motivated you, yourself to be involved in SEDEC, Sam? Uh, that's a good question. I, uh, well, I grew up in Habonim Draw, the youth mm -hmm. movement, mm -hmm. um, and I came out of that with a really strong sense of um, social justice and social action. And um, for me, international development and, and poverty abroad seems like one of the big issues uh, that faces our, our global society today. Mm. And to be able to work at SEDEC, which is a, a Jewish envisioning of that idea, is actually a real privilege. Mm. Because it allows me to put both my Jewish values and my um, values as a, as a citizen uh, of the world, I guess, mm. uh, into action. From a personal perspective, Sam, SEDEC seems to me to be a win-win situation because not only is SEDEC um, assisting in uh, solving global poverty, but the possible results are a great credit to the Jewish community as well. Uh, absolutely, I would agree with that. Uh, I think that certainly as SEDEC grows, um, to be an organisation that makes a real impact uh, with SEDEC, with the Jewish name and the Jewish values that lie behind it, uh, it, it sends a really important message. Mm. And um, if viewers of this video, um, Sam, want to perhaps vol volunteer to be a volunteer, so to speak, mm -hmm. Um, or perhaps want to make a contribution to all the marvellous work that you undertake, uh -huh. um, how can they contact you? Well, uh, there are plenty of ways that people can get involved, either through the Overseas Projects team, working on our education team to help deliver educational programmes in schools and schools and youth movements. And Is it a, pr a primary and high school, Sam? Yeah, that's both. Mm. Uh, and also, to some extent, some, uh, some adult education as well, where, mm. it's, where it's appropriate. Mm. So there's plenty of opportunities for people to get involved and volunteer. They can also choose to fundraise for SEDEC. We had a big campaign recently called Dare Yourself for SEDEC. Uh, some people did a bungee jump. Some people walked all across London uh, to fundraise. Uh, and they can also donate directly to SEDEC. The best way to do have a that. website? Yes, the website is www.tzedek.org.uk. Sam, volunteer coordinator for SEDEC, uh, thank you for joining Jewish Online Magazine. It's been a really, really, really um, interesting and very informative chat with you, Sam. Uh, I hadn't heard of SEDEC before, um, and it's been a really, really uh, inspirational um, chat because SEDEC does some amazing, amazing work and I hope the people that are going to uh, view this video um, are going to perhaps get involved in SEDEC in any way that they can. Absolutely. And thank you very much indeed for your time, Sam. Thank you. Thank you.